My name is Elsie Fa Kaufman. I am an associate professor of biomedical engineering at the School of Engineering Sciences, University of Ghana. I'm also the dean of the school. I'm happy to be here with you <laughs> on Just for Women in Africa. <laughs> So it wasn't planned. It wasn't planned at all. You know, uh, going to school in Ghana, uh, I was a science student. I was selected to be in the science student based on performance. So the good students were expected to be science students. And if you're a good science student, you're expected to go to medical school. So that was a plan all along. I was supposed to go to medical school and become a medical doctor. But then things were to change very much because I got an opportunity to leave Ghana on scholarship. I went to the United World College of the Atlantic. And then from there, I decided I would go to the U.S. And that's when I realized it was not possible to go straight to medical school. So I had to do something else. And I found out about bioengineering at the University of Pennsylvania. And so I applied for that program thinking it would be a good pre-med course to do as I was preparing to go to medical school. Of course, everything changed. And I realized that it was something very exciting and I wanted to stay with it. Um, one thing I have to say also is that when I got the scholarship to leave Ghana the first time, um, the panel that selected me told me, you are going out there to represent Ghana, go and learn as much as possible, come home and come make a difference. So all along, I was thinking about what difference can I possibly make? And so when I started the program in bioengineering and I realized that it was something that could help me make the difference. I was basically sold and decided to stay with it and go as far as possible. Uh, I remember the exact time that happened. I was on the phone with my father, called, and he asked me, what did you say you are studying again? I told him bioengineering. He said, what is that? I hope you know we don't have it here in Ghana. And that was when it clicked for me that that was the difference I was going to come and make. Now, in order to come back to a country um, with a new idea, with a new program, I felt I needed to be an authority in that subject so that I would be listened to if I were, that was the difference I was going to make. I was going to bring biomedical engineering or bioengineering to Ghana. And that's what propelled me to go on to do all the way to go do a PhD. Yes, AI is everywhere now. Almost any problem that is being solved, students and even researchers, professionals are looking for ways in which to use AI to solve those problems. So let me share with you a couple of the projects I'm working on personally with my students and uh, so that you see how uh, interested everyone is in using this, this new tool, which is the AI. Um, I have a team of students. Actually, it's a now been a series of students that have been working on a project, um, basically detecting me mental health disorders. And they are using AI to do this. How they basically are asking questions. So it's, it's a tool for diagnosis, right? So mm -hmm. the health professional will have this app uh, that they use. They use it as part of the, the procedure that they um, healthcare professionals use to diagnose mental health disorders. They ask a series of questions and based on the training that they have on this AI system, they are able to predict whether uh, the patient has one type of mental health uh, challenge or the other or whether they have comorbidities. What is interesting about the system that we are working on here at the University of Ghana is that uh, the professionals normally have difficulty diagnosing comorbidities. That means uh, multiple of these disorders at the same time in a patient. Okay. And so by using the AI system, we are able to detect with a good, uh, 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 what I'll say, uh, reasonable accuracy. And so that's a progress, right? Okay, so this is just one project. We have other students working on different uh, other projects as well, detecting um, um, arrhythmia, basically, um, irregular heart beats or heart rates, right, of our, of our patients in the hospital. So this is, again, another tool to help the men, uh, medical health professionals, cardiologists in this particular case, to be able to do diagnosis of various types of arrhythmias. Uh, we have another group working on uh, asthma, 
right? So they want to detect asthma. Again, they are using um, the diagnostic tools that are used in the hospital, but now incorporating AI to help the medical professionals to be able to diagnose much more easily. So there's a lot going on in the areas of diagnosis of me me medical uh, medical cases. A lot has been done to, to okay. make it possible to do this. Okay. The challenge we have right now is that we don't have many local databases. So although we have started developing these AI systems, the data that is used to train the systems we are developing are not data from us. And to think that everything is readily translatable is uh, actually being naive. We know that there are differences. You know, the way in which one patient presents in our environment may be different from the way in which the patients that were, um, uh, whose data was used for these databases that we are borrowing from present. And so we need to contextualize what it is that we are doing. We need to have our own databases so that we know that when we train our systems, they are likely to make the predictions that are relevant to our local population. That's the biggest challenge that I see. So far, we have not contributed too much to the development or even uh, the generation of these databases that are being used. And in order for AI systems to work, you need vast amounts of data to be able to train and then to validate these systems. So that's where I see our main challenge. So how mm -hmm. can we how can we uh, take care of this? We need to start developing our own databases for all the various types of things that we do. Take information. We need to contribute to the information that is being used um, to train these AI systems, and we need to develop our own uh, AI systems so that some of these biases uh, can be taken care of. So basically, what the AI systems do is to augment or make life easier for our healthcare professionals. And in fact, we need these systems more than we, we, we think we do. The reason being we are in, a, in a, an environment where we have a shortage of healthcare professionals. Have you ever been to a maternity ward before? It's been a while. <laughs> uh -huh. If you go there, what you will see that you have a few healthcare professionals that are taking care of a large number of patients. In fact, there are cases here in Ghana where we say that beds are taken up, we don't have enough beds, we see patients on the floor, right? And there are very few healthcare professionals who are taking care of these hospital wards. What we need to do is to use these systems. If we have an AI-assisted uh, system to monitor these patients. So, for example, um, in the last stage of labor, uh, when the maternal, yeah, since we are talking about maternal health, the last stage of labor, these uh, pregnant women are supposed to be monitored regularly. However, you go check the hospitals and see if this is really happening. If you have very few healthcare professionals in a ward with so many of these uh, patients that need to be monitored, basically something has to give. They are not able to do the monitoring. Even after they give birth, they are supposed to... Uh, um, get massages or get certain uh, uh, help to help the uterus to contract, to stop bleeding and so on. A lot of the time, the women are asked to do that themselves because there are, are not enough professionals on the wards to do everything that needs to get done. So with an AI system of monitoring, for example, this is an, an example I'm giving, and mm -hmm. this is, has been one of the projects that our students have been working on anyway. You can monitor contractions right? And you can use your AI system to pre, uh, predict or to forecast a negative outcome and then take the steps that are necessary to take care of that issue before it becomes that negative outcome that is predicted, right? So an, an alerting system of some sort based on information and likelihood of certain things happening, this can be done. So this is one of the ways in which I see AI being used. Another thing also has to do with uh, Availability of professionals, specialists. If I were to tell you that uh, neurologists in Ghana, for example, we don't have many of them. The last time, uh, two years ago, when I had a student uh, group working on a project on, 
neuro neurological disorders. There were only five of them in Ghana. With our population, how many people can see a specialist of that sort? And so if we develop these AI systems for diagnosis, we free up these five for the very serious cases which they need to see. So for screening purposes, any healthcare professional can use some of these AI assisted systems that we are developing and then refer to one of the few. So it's very helpful. It's going to be very helpful if we can deploy them in task shifting, right? So that we don't overburden uh, specialists. Uh, first, we need to understand, right, that these are systems that are needed. Uh, these are systems that can help us develop in the direction that we want to go. And if we truly understand, then we will dedicate the necessary resources to doing this. Right now, um, research funding is a major, it's a major concern. Are you aware of any research uh, 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 funds in Ghana that we can access to do the kind of work that you are asking me about? No. <laughs> uh -huh. That's a problem. Uh, we need to dedicate the resources to the the kind of funding, uh, you know, the funding that we need to do uh, serious research in this area because research can be expensive, right? And so we need to be able to dedicate uh, resources to do the work. We also need capacity building, and I'm happy to say that there's a lot going on in that direction. A lot of people in Ghana are now learning about uh, different algorithms, about AI and applications in various areas, and including health, which is what we've been talking about. Uh, so we need more of that. We need the expertise. We need the capacity to be able to do that. Those are the two things that I see we should be addressing right now if we want to be uh, leaders. Um, well, first of all, um, with regard to uh, training and capacity building, I see that there's a lot of interest now. In the next decade, I expect that many of the curricula that we are running now would have been revamped to include um, AI uh, as applications. In the, next, in the next few years, I expect to see many more student projects incorporating AI um we hopefully would also understand a lot more about what is possible and what is not possible, the limitations of AI and the ethics surrounding the use and deployment of AI. Uh -huh. So I, I'm expecting a lot of um a lot of growth in that direction. Um I don't know if there's a possibility that we may decide that we will not use certain aspects of the AI that is coming up because of ethical concerns. But we certainly, we certainly should have a, a framework, a legal framework, an ethical framework, even a framework that uh, puts us uh, towards the ethical use and development of these systems. It's already happening. If you have been following Kwame AI, I'm an advisor on that project. So they are building a system known as Brilla AI. And what they are doing, basically, they already have my voice. <laughs> uh, they have me asking questions. Uh, the last, the 2023 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz, they had the, uh, the Brilla AI competing in the last round, a round of riddles. So they are able to listen to my voice. They are able to take my voice, uh, have the AI uh, answer, try to answer ahead of the human contestants. And I think they were they had a bit of success doing that, but of course they need to work on it. Um, what that project envisions is a more equitable uh, availability, access, equitable access to resources for learning science, for even practicing and uh, participating in a competition like this. So the competition has become very popular. Everybody wants to do it, but not everybody gets a chance to sit on stage with me and compete, right? Mm -hmm. And not everybody gets a chance to have all the material that is necessary or that should be available for them to learn the subjects. 
So by setting up this AI system, somebody in the most remote part of Africa should be able to set, um, interact with the AI system, have the feel of being in a competition, and also learn the material so that they can um, use it for for the, what what they need it for. As students, they they study these subjects and they need to understand them in order to be able to be the innovators of the future. Yes, mm -hmm. so that that's the that that's the what has happened. That is already happening. So this is not news. <laughs> it's already happening. They just need to um, work harder on the technical aspects of this very ambitious project to be able to have. Uh, a system that can do all five rounds of the competition and, and not make too many mistakes. Yes, hopefully they can even replace the quiz mistress <laughs> with an AI. <laughs>